this if we could. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to you all here and those watching online to this special service. It's one of the highlights of the church calendar for a few reasons, that we enjoy the, the work of the children, what they've been doing throughout the year. We see their hard work, we see their smiling faces. That's most of all what you've come to, to see today, isn't it? The, the children. So we're blessed with that family, the young folks, but we're also blessed that we are the family of God here in Carloway. And it's a unique and precious thing that both congregations come together, uh, not just today, but throughout the year. And it's, uh, it's something special, I think, that we, tr we do treasure, and that in this community, both congregations identify so clearly as the people of God, members and adherents, and we treasure that. So it makes it a very much a, a family service today. So thank you all for coming. It's a good, good crowd. There's no need to be nervous, DJ, in front of such a large gathering. I certainly would be. <laughs> so afterwards, if, you, if you're of a mind to, please stay behind for refreshments. They'll be served through at the back. So we'll begin with a, a hymn, just a, a Christmas carol, just to get us in the mood and the theme of today, what the children will present, after which I'll give a short prayer, and then we'll hand over to DJ and the team. So we're going to sing Once in Royal David City. Let's stand to sing this.
Well, let's join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty, our Heavenly Father, we bless you this day that you've called us as your children here to church to worship the Christ, the Redeemer of mankind. We thank you, Lord, that you've opened our eyes and our hearts to realize the truth that Christ came to save sinners, of which we all are. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we thank you, Lord, that in your mercy you looked upon us, upon humanity, our struggles, and you sent a Redeemer, sent him as a helpless babe into this world. He grew, he grew to be the one whom we love and adore and follow for the rest of our lives and into eternity. So, Father, we've gathered this day to hear the, the wondrous story, the most amazing story ever told. And each year we hear it again in different ways and shapes and forms. And we thank you for the children who are going to present it to us this day in their own unique way. We thank you for all the effort that has gone into it, the times of rehearsal, the teachers, the hours they've put in. And we offer it to you, Lord, as an act of worship and thanksgiving from, from the parish that we represent, from all the villages. We thank you, God, for the family gathered, for each and every one, for every household and all the neighbors, who, some who are watching online and those who are watching from afar. We pray, Lord, that you will gather us all to come closer to Christ, to understand the, the enormity of what he came to do. We pray, Lord, that conviction will come even to, the, to some watching this day, that the simplicity and yet profundity of, this, of the story will touch the deepest hearts and cause people to realize that for me, Christ came. For you, Christ came. And so we would find a place for him in our hearts, that our hearts would be like the very manger in which he rested on his first days. So Lord, come among us and bless our act of worship, bless the children, and maybe a, a sense of unity and love, for love is the key to all. And may we, as the angel said, know the peace of God upon all whom your favor rests. May your favor rest upon our gathering here today, each and every one. Go before us now, Lord, and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask. Amen. Oh, well, again, uh, double welcome to today's service, and we have a real treat in store for you today. This is going to be a, it's going to title the story of the Bible. It's kind of, you've got, you, a lot of you have iPhones and smartphones and fancy cameras. There's a panoramic setting on that. So this is going to be a, we're on panoramic setting here in church today. It's going to be a large kind of 360 degree panoramic sweeping photo of the Bible. And it's titled, oh, there it is. The story of the Bible might be a wee bit tricky at the beginning, so bear with us just as we get the, uh, the children up to, to speak. But when it comes to singing, I want you to do something for the children today. They've put a lot into this, and, uh, and, and um, they're going to do a great job. But when it comes to the singing, help them a wee bit. Sing a wee bit. When the words are on the screen, just lift your voices, open your mouths, and just help them, and it'll give them a real morale boost. So, the story of the Bible... We have everybody here who's going to play a role uh, from Genesis to Malachi and from Matthew to Revelation. Every part of the Bible, 360, a panoramic view. I'm looking for Isabel. I can't. And there she is. Yeah. So we have a floor management team in position. We have sound, mic, and the visuals all ready. So, Isabel, thumbs up. And, and Sophia will be the first to take us through the story of the Bible. The Bible is all about Jesus. The people in the Old Testament times looked forward to the coming of the Saviour. Jesus came in the New Testament and he proved that he was the saviour the world was waiting for. We now look back in thankfulness, putting our faith in him, and we look forward to his second coming. Today we're going on a journey through the Bible and we'll see that it's ultimately all about Jesus. 
In Genesis, God created the world in perfection, but Adam and Eve desired more. When they were tempted by the devil disguised as a snake, sin came into the world. God promised a savior when he said the following to the snake, I will put my enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. We see that sin led into a world that didn't care about God. God warned through Noah that the world would be flooded and that the only way to be saved would be by stepping onto the ark. We were told through the Bible that the only way to be saved is through Jesus. If we listen to God's word and put our hope in Jesus, we will be saved forever. Later in Genesis, God called Abraham to follow him. Jesus came from the family of Abraham. Abraham was Jesus's great-great-great-great-great okay. grandfather. <laughs> God said to Abraham that blessing would come through him. This blessing was to be Jesus, the saviour of the world. God said to Abraham, I will make you a gr into a great nation and I will bless you. I will, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And people, people and all peoples on the world will be blessed through you. Later on in Genesis, we see how people in the, go in the people of God became sa slaves in Egypt, <coughs> and Moses went sa said to lead them to freedom. God's people were saved from great loss when they painted their doorposts and lamb and lamb's blood in in the same way by the blood of. Christ, we are saved from the greatest loss. The people left Egypt and eventually made it to the Promised Land. They faced many challenges before they could enjoy their new home. Christians also faced lots of challenges in this world before they can reach the Promised Land of Heaven. There were many good years in the Promised Land, especially when David was king. David was also Jesus's glee, glee, glee. Don't glee. start this again. <laughs> Glamfaber. <laughs> Glamfaber. <laughs> David wasn't perfect, and his life shows us how easy we can be tempted by sin. It also shows us that God will always forgive us if we ask him to. Jesus died to pay the punishment for all of the wrong things we do. By trusting in him, our punishment is paid. God knows all, the, all things. Nothing can be hidden from him. Even, therefore, when we do the wrong thing, we shouldn't try to hide it from him, since it's not possible to do that. Instead, we should come to ask him for forgiveness and continue to walk with him. We're now going to sing a song, which is based on one of David's songs, Psalm 139.
Oh, well, thank you. A ripple of applause always boosts people. So once we return to musical instruments, the mic will be going to John, I think. And then he'll... Danny. Danny, and then he'll launch into the next phase of biblical prophecy and revelation. Many years after David Vane came to an end, God people had turned their back on God. They had done the game many times before and after and God often had to bring them back to himself. Around the time the prophet I get the following. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from who people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore and suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, he was punished. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Everybody likes sheep. They're gonna stray. Each of us oh, turn to our own way. Lord, uh, wait. In the fall. Isaiah spoke clearly of the coming of Jesus, describing many details of Jesus' crucifixion, even though G Isaiah lived around 700 years before Jesus was born. We continue our Bible journey and see that God's people, the nation of Israel, eventually became so rebellious that it led to them being banished from Israel to Babylon and the and other places, their capital city of Jerusalem, where David and the others had been kings, were destroyed. It was this time we heard about Daniel, a faithful man of God. He and his friends were taken to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. They refused to compromise their faith and we hear of, a great, of great and amazing stories of God protecting them through dangerous situations. One night Daniel saw a vision of Jesus. He described it as follows using the phrase the son of man which was a name Jesus used when he spoke about himself in the New Testament. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. We're now going to sing a song about some of the people we have just heard about.
The people of Israel eventually go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the fallen cookie. God sent prophets to them at the time in order to prepare the way for his son coming. They tell about a new covenant. A covenant is a promise and a gre- and agreement from God. Let's hear what they had to say. Jeremiah, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people, for I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. They will be my people and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my disgrace. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be everlasting covenant. I will establish them and increase their numbers, and I will put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be in them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Zeriah, the Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves the flock they will sparkle in the in hands like a jewels in a crown how attractive beautiful they will be Malachi, on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them, just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves them. And you will again see the distinction (coughs) between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. Around 400 years after the end of the Old Testament, the prophecies were about to be fulfilled. The Saviour of the world was born to a young mother in the city of Bethlehem. God was bringing a new government to a world.
Jesus grew up around the age of 30. He began his ministry. For three years he forgave and healed people and pointed everyone to God. Some listened, some did not. It's still true today. Some listen to his words and some do not. Jacob gave he is the way, the truth and the life. To trust in him is to be born again into a new life with God, a life that will never end. Jesus was sentenced to death by those who did not believe in him. But God was ultimately in control and Jesus' death was all part of a great plan of salvation for mankind. After Jesus died, he was laid to rest in a tomb. He rose again from death to life on the third day and later ascended to heaven and defeated death and secured eternal life for all those who trust in him. The New Testament tells us about the lives of people who trusted in Jesus and it sets out guidance and encouragement for the Christian life. It's full of amazing teaching. The Bible finishes with the book of Revelation, which explains that Jesus will come a second time to bring the final end to sin and death. If we trust in him, then we will be ready to meet him and we will go to be with him in a place where sin does not exist. The final promise Uh, the children aren't quite finished yet, so they're just taking a wee break. 
Uh, I was at the photocopier and uh, it was quite a big office area that I used to work in a few years ago and it was around this time of year uh, and there was a clutch of the kind of admin staff, the secretaries, four or five, maybe more of them and they were all clustered around one computer and there was an, uh, a lady fairly new to the department and new to the, to the, to the, to the floor And uh, I wasn't listening, but I couldn't, I couldn't help but hear. And she was inviting them to something. It was this time of year, so probably some kind of Christmas party or something. Uh, and I thought, I thought the body language froze slightly. It wasn't quite right. And uh, she invited them, and she was asked. The body language went funny because she was asked the question. I don't know if you've ever invited people to something or organized something, and, but you get asked the question first. Who else is going? <laughs> who are the A-listers who might be at this event that you know, I might get to stand next to them or even better, I might get, they might speak to me. And I thought, uh, I saw something last week that reminded me, I thought invitations, complicated things, complicated kind of social dynamic. And uh, then I, sadly I saw something on the news, uh, an eight-year-old girl in America and 22 people, nobody came to their birthday party. Uh, and again, it kind of went into it, the, the preparation, the everything getting ready, you know, the emotions involved in the child's birthday, and then it didn't get any, she assumed everybody was coming. Nobody came, and it had this heart, quite a heartbreaking photo. I wish I had taken it and put it up. But at the end of it all, it said, the football, the American football team in that city, Seattle or somewhere like that, they all came. They did a special party for this little girl in there in their football stadium, a magnificent football stadium, and a huge section of the crowd, of the town, sorry, uh, you know, the mayor and the people, they all came to this special party made for this little girl. And I think, uh, I mean, you've all been in church through the years, and nobody here is really new to church. I think you can already see where my talk is going. The Bible is full of invitations. Come unto me, all ye that labor, whosoever thirsts, let them come unto me. And in a sense, every week, everybody is invited to be in church, to come and worship. It's a standing invitation, an open invitation. And more than that, you are also invited to believe, to repent, and to become a Christian. So this poor lady, the body language went wrong. You know, I thought, oh, my goodness. And who else is... It's kind of... It's a, it's, it, if you're invited to something, don't, don't use that phrase. Don't... don't it's kind of, well, I mean, you're not very important. Who, who else? Oh, it's, it's you, isn't it? Oh, 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 you know, it kind of diminishes, it reduces the invitation to, to I think you can see where I'm going with this. Um, but more than that, the poor girl in Seattle, nobody came to her birthday party. And as the children, one of the children read out, there's a variety of responses to the invitation of the gospel. And Jesus, one of the more kind of dramatic moments, gives a parable of people being invited, invite them, invite them. He prepared everything, the party, the feast is prepared. Where are those who are bidden? The emotions that that poor mom in Seattle had, they're kind of, Jesus says, they're replicated with God in a sense. The prep you, you can feel it too, you can sense it when you do things and who's going to come, that nervousness. And even if one, sometimes if one person doesn't come, they can elicit these complicated and that poor lady had the photocopy. I think, her, you know, she saw the whole kind of social dynamic, you know, in front of her from that one who else is one question that, you know, it's a, it's a strategy. It's unspoken. Nobody really kind of says it, but it's there. And um, maybe in a sense, even in church, it's unspoken. But, you know, who else? Oh, are they there? Oh, well, you know, oh, they're there. Oh, well, maybe come to church for the right reasons, for the right motives and uh, with the right attitude and the right heart. God extends an invitation to you. You are invited. Thank you all for coming and accepting the invitation to be here, to listen to the children and to be part of our service this morning. You're invited to stay and have tea, but more than that, just about finished, you're invited to follow Christ. To, to, do, do you thirst? If you thirst, Jesus says, come to him. If, if you're weak, heavy, heavy laden, if you feel the pressures of life and the pressures of, 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 of everything on you, you're invited to be with Christ, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. 
So in the future, whether it's an invitation to church, an invitation to a party, if you can't make it, reply at least. But if you can, go. And if you can, and if you hear God's voice in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, don't say who else is going or what else is going to be there. Accept it. Accept it in the way it's given and accept it fully and truly. You are invited. Right, the last song is a special feature, so kind of bear with us a few minutes. We might have to pick mics off the floor, uh, and there's props as well, and there might be a wee bit of kind of, kind of semi-rehearsal going on. Okay, and this is the last one of our performers. And after this, it's going to be a congregational singing, so you'll get to, you'll get to raise a roof if you want.
Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, that nice ripple of applause. And uh, Isabel and all the staff who prepared this and uh, our children uh, appreciate that deeply. That concludes it, kind of. Uh, you're now going to get the chance to sing, and I'll. Will I introduce it? Or? Yeah. And it's Mission Praise 1209. My heart is full of thankfulness. <laughs> We're standing and before we have a joint benediction, let's give the children and the teachers a standing ovation, please. Let's do it. <laughs> and now, now may the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of, of God, God the Father, and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, one tiny thing just uh, to add, um, on behalf of the parents, uh, the families and the congregations, we have a very small gift uh, to give to Isabel and to DJ, who over the year have uh, just done such an incredible job uh, organizing uh, and teaching in our Sunday school. So we're so grateful to Isabel and DJ. We've got a wee present here. Uh, John's gonna pass it over to me. I shall ask Isabel and Gigi to come up so I can give you these gifts. There we go. And there we are, Isabel. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> if I could also just uh, take an opportunity to say on behalf of, of the Free Church how thankful we are to you, Duncan, and to everybody uh, for the opportunity to be together here today. It's just amazing for us to join together uh, in a joint service. Uh, that was the best Bible overview I have ever heard, so <laughs> it was fantastic uh, and so grateful uh, for this opportunity to be together today. And a reminder that at 7.30 tonight, we've got a time of carol singing uh, next door that everyone's invited to. So we've got carols, mince pies, half past seven tonight. Uh, please come, we'd love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> 